What is up, 517? It is a new year, new season, and new series for the Forum Podcast for Lansing City, all things Lansing City, all the time. This is a special preseason episode, and we are doing it in the wonderful digs of the Lansing City Arena, joined by Jeremy Kleppel and Jacob Derby. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. How are you doing, Rich? So, first off, uh, a lot of things have been going on the last year. Uh, can you explain how the league's been trying to adapt and prepare for this season? Yeah, I mean, so something happened in March. I don't know if you heard. It was some kind of pandemic or something hit. <laughs> I don't know Passing. Heard I, I, heard it, I heard it through the weeds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, obviously that shut everything down. And so, you know, it seems like momentum's going in the right direction with, um, you know, sports opening back up. So the league had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and they're um, scheduled a January 2021 start. Uh, looking at the second week of January um, is what we were told. And so we're getting ready to go here. And uh, what uh, capacity wise, obviously with this going on, there's going to have to be an adjustment for capacity. Is there a league wide standard or is it kind of like team by team, given how the different rules in the states are going with this pandemic? Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think the capacity is going to be team by team. Um, we're not making any statements about that right now. We want to kind of wait and see. It's still September. There's oh, a yeah. lot of, a oh, lot of time. It could change it, tomorrow. Yeah, it could change. I mean, you know, the virus is serious. Um, we need to mitigate risk in as many ways as we can. And so, you know, we'll be doing that as a, as a club in a lot of different ways. But, you know, from the league's perspective, it's going to be club by club. Okay. And... Uh with the new season, their youth academies are starting to kick up as um, Lansing City Social Media. They started talking about tryouts, getting together, come out, get your kids out. This is an amazing sport held by an amazing club. Um, what What are your strategies for uh, the youth teams and how they're going to handle the change in protocol, so to say? Yeah, I mean, you know, futsal is a sport that's a little bit, you know, it doesn't take as many people to play it. So we have a little bit of advantage there. Um, so we'll be doing more sanitization and stuff like that. Just basic stuff, trying to keep kids safe. Yeah, because it's uh, we want that future to you know. St yeah. <laughs> still uh, not having. It's, fear it's looking to do good it. right now. I mean, a lot of people want to play. You know, that's kind of the reoccurring theme is people want to play and try to get back to normal. So. It's and I think that's really important. Although safety has to be the number one priority. Number one for sure. A, re a return to normalcy. I mean, you know, with the NFL going, all MLS, all these soccer, there's a little, you know, sense of yeah. things are starting to kind of return to normal. And uh, I listened to Sirius FC, and they were talking about how they want to, like, absence of mind. They, you know, the financial situation there is so dire with the lower league clubs that, and it's also the mental capacity of these fans that, you know, we have no soccer. What am I going to do? So mm -hmm. I think uh, trying to trick the mind into thinking that, you know, okay, things aren't as bad for just you know an hour or two i think that means the yeah. world and it can mean the world yeah i mean i think it does i mean sports is important um you know it's a complicated situation obviously there's only so much you know we can say we're not you know doctors or scientists or anything so but um we're going to do our job making sure we keep people safe and then trying to um bring futsal back the best we can and uh for preseason coming up uh what tryouts are in november I believe it is for the for the senior team. What's uh what are the what are the goals? What's the strategy for these tryouts here? Yeah, so we have a training camp set for uh, March. I'm oh, sorry, March, November sixth, seventh, and eighth. Um, the team um, players will report November fifth. The out of town players will report November fifth. Um, and so we'll have our first look at everybody in those three days. Um, and then Coach Derbs um, wanted to have an open tryout just to, we always do it every year. We do it for free. We don't charge people for it. Just to basically make sure everybody understands that there's an opportunity. Um, no matter where you live, who you are, how much money you have, um, we always give people an opportunity every year to come out and see if they you know, have what it takes. So that'll be November 7th at 6.30. Okay, so if anyone wants to, you know, hash it out on the beautiful wood grain court here. Here's your opportunity. And I think uh, accessibility with sports, regardless of what's going on in the rest of the world, I think it's huge for people. Because, yeah. you know, there are sports, you know, you get priced out of. You know, this seems like one of those sports that, you know, you can learn, you can develop, and you can enjoy it and not have to, you know, worry about if I can pay a due, you know, whatever, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I think when you try to identify talent, we try to keep this, a similar approach with our youth academy, too. I think it's important, you know, obviously pay-to-play has to be part of the system, but I think that 
Um, having opportunities for people to be identified for, for free with no expense is extremely important. Um, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily have the sense that it's possible because um, they think that it's, you know, there's a lot of barriers to entry. They think that they don't have, you know, maybe the money to attend all these ID camps or things like that. And so, you know, it was something that Jake and I talked about in the early years was just saying, hey, we're going to have this open tryout every year. It's going to be free. I can't tell you how many people have asked us when we're going to start charging for it, you know, because a lot of people charge for the open tryouts. And it's fine if they do. But, you know, for us, it's just we, we want it. We want everyone to have the opportunity to, you know, get a look and uh, not have money be the reason why they can't. And that, I think that's huge. Yeah. Um, Jacob, what are the uh, strategies for this upcoming season when identifying four players? Ident identifying four players? Yeah, like what, what, what are you looking for this year to help uh, improve off what was the positives from last year? Okay, um, I think the, the biggest thing, and that's something that's kind of one of our cultures and we're trying to grow on is having having players that have the... Can I just have you move closer oh, to the back there? Oh, no worries. We can, we can edit this part out. Perfect. Perfect. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I, think, I think part of the culture that we're trying to grow and, and identify, make that our identity is having players that have the technical ability with their feet, especially futsal-specific technique, and being able to do that under the immense pressure that the sport you know, applies. You know? Um, and then athletically and defensively, we found that that's been a big area where the, the game... Ooh, you're popping in my There ears. we go. Um, athletically and defensively, that's a big area where you know you have to have the ability to defend, speed up the game defensively, and make put the pressure on the opposing team. Um, so basically, the the abilities that you need to have is to make the other team feel as much pressure throughout the whole game as possible, with and without the ball. And uh, how can you carry the momentum from the end of last year into this year? Because City was picking, they were picking up the results playing a lot more competitively compared to the first couple games. How do you take that momentum before it was cut off and transfer it to preseason and yeah, the un opener? Unfortunately, right, the, the kind of season cut off right at a uh, time where we were starting to find our identity as a group. Um, we started to click, started to, the score lines were starting to show that. Um, but now we have the, you know, the time and the resources. Um, we're a little more comfortable with the facility being ready and all that, the good stuff. So. We're able to, you know, bring in a lot of those guys and continue that growth going forward, um, and we'll be able to spend more time and have a little more consistency as far as, you know, the, being able to have the guys around and you know grow from what we had before. And uh, given meeting off-season meetings with the teams, and uh, how do you guys feel that uh, you guys are stacked up compared to last year with the league, talent-wise? Um, I. It's a good question. Um, I think, from from my my perspective, right, we have one of the best players in the country, right. Um, I think we're young. Um, I think we are futsal wise. We're still a a young mindset type group of guys, still trying to grow. Um, but there's still a lot of talent. There's still a lot of um, positive things within that group, and we started to bring those out at the end of the season before we got cut short. Um, you know, so every year, right, we, we have the mindset that we're, we're gonna step to the plate and, and win and deliver for the fans and um, the, the club and the city. Um, and I think that this year with preparations and the conversations we've had about, about the roster makeup, I think we have the ability to do that. And uh, I think this year is gonna be absolutely huge because the environments at games, last year home games, was amazing. The tri -Zub game and the Ann Arbor game, that was bonkers. <laughs> I mean, it was, for me, yeah, was hearing that, uh, it was on level of like a college basketball game, yeah. in a sense, because these walls and the ceilings, they echo so well. And uh, I have to ask, uh, have any teams like expressed their jealousy with the facilities that you guys have? I bring it up in every episode, just, <laughs> just accept it. This is unlike anything any other team has. Yeah, I mean, the facility's great, obviously, and you know, I think, I think people express the excitement that futsal's growing when they see this. I think that they, um, you know, there maybe there's some jealousy, but but usually it's just people saying, you know, wow, this is happening. We're excited about this. You know, we hope it can happen in, in more places, which is you know our what we want. Um, futsal's a great sport. 
like you said, it's really fun to watch, and so we want this to happen in other places. You know? yeah. And uh, is there any way we can have maybe some sort of a uh, clue as to who's going to be coming back <laughs> next year at all? Because I know there that's, were some that's pretty, a question. I pretty, mean, pretty big contributors last year, so I think. Yeah, uh, I, I will be back, I think. <laughs> yes. Definitely. You just heard it here. Yeah. Jeremy Pfeffel will be back. Yep. I, I heard a rumor you were trying out. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could. Cover sub. I mean, I could be a. I could be a keeper sub, like you know the big green, <laughs> like the big green, the cover yeah. photo. Yeah. I mean, only only contract stipulation is I won't be a net when this dude yeah. when this dude kicks the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I have good health insurance, but you know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe just for a bar story, you know, get a, get a welt on the side and be like, yeah. nah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, as far as far as roster though, um, a lot of a lot of the makeup. Uh, is going to be fairly similar. Um, a lot of the conversations we're having are about adding and improving, um, and I think that's kind of the next step that we're taking, um, you know, to create a competitive environment for all the players, you know, because essentially if you don't bring in more talent, then it becomes stagnant. So we're trying to, that's the conversations we're having, you know, on the administration side, trying to bring guys in and make it work so we can build, build our talent level, our depth, right, and create a competitive culture. And with these tryouts, as a coach, what uh, what are uh, what are the most difficult things to try and accomplish by the end of the tryouts? I know people, yeah, you come, you get a look, and you go home and hope for a phone call. But as a coach, what 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 are the difficulties for the tryouts besides you know picking players and stuff like that? Um, I think the difficulty for a tryout is depending on the number of people that decide to show up. Um, it's just giving them the proper opportunity to be evaluated and you know be seen, um, as well as giving them the conversations that they deserve, so they know where they need to improve in the areas that they need to, you know, if they're interested in coming next year, right? Um, I think that's the hard part um, because we are trying to add to our roster. So as soon as the tryout's over, that's the next focus is getting the team set and then building. So the hard part, I think, is just getting them the proper, you know, evaluation and the appropriate conversations that they deserve. And uh, last year's roster was very heavy on local players, which I think is amazing. Is that mentality going to, you know, stick with the tryouts and the roster formation, or is it kind of, you know, we're, we're going to take the best, best players we can find? Um, I, I think that having a, a local brand is important I think having those guys in the culture is important um, you know but at the end of the day we're here trying to win you know so if that means we have to bring someone else in from a different you know area then that's what we're gonna do um, but we do love and respect the guys that are local guys and you know there will be guys on the court that are playing from the from the area but we at the end of the day we're trying to win and bring guys in okay. and uh, Jeremy from a league standpoint obviously the uh season got cut about halfway through what uh what plans for like championship playoffs is there any contingency plans when that rolls around or is it just kind of we'll have to you know see what happens when that time comes uh, i'm actually not aware of um is there any way you can actually turn the, the noise in my yeah. my ones down let's see it sounds like I'm screaming at myself. Is that okay? No, no, it's perfect. Yeah. Right, cool. I'm like, go. dang, I saw that. It's been a while. It's been a while. So <laughs> no, I'm no, no. To... You're fine. I just, <laughs> maybe I just talk loud. I don't know. But uh, from the league standpoint, um, it you know I don't really know what's going on. Um, the league has done a great job this year, being proactive about setting schedules and um, holding an AGM and all those kind of things. Um, I, you know, but as far as as far as that stuff goes, I mean, I think they're kind of waiting until you know uh, closer to the season to kind of set okay these are the contingencies if you know things I mean if things get shut down you know we're not going to play but um, I mean if there's no fans there's no fans you know they're planning on having a full season playoffs finals everything so okay you know that it's good to see that we're actually going to be able to finish the season this time yeah I mean like that's the thing like futsal is a growing sport um, and uh, we're a growing club and we're really excited about this year because you know last year was cut short and I think that um, the season kind of went really how normally our seasons go which is like an absolute roller coaster <laughs> at some moments we look like holy cow we were like so good and then other moments we we're like oh my gosh we we're playing put, so bad put rich in goal you yeah, know? <laughs> yeah but, well the weird thing is too is like there's some games that you know, like the first game that we played last year, we were up 3-1. Yeah. And then fell apart 
you know, in the second half. And uh, then we played away at Columbus, and we're up, I don't know, it was like 6-1 or 5-1 or something. And then again in the second half, fell apart. You know, so it's like futsal is a very interesting sport in which um, you can do a lot of good things, but if you have, you know, if you have one or two pieces that are not correct, and not necessarily talking about players, but moments in the game or things in the game that you don't do well, you get punished really fast. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and it's just, it's a game that, you know, mistakes are punished immediately. And, uh, you know, like in, in basketball, it's a little bit different. You know, you score, you know, by one, twos, and threes, high scoring games. If you make a couple mistakes, it's only a bucket or two, right? right? Yeah. In futsal, a mistake or two changes the whole game. Oh, yeah. And um, very similar to soccer, but the difference is, you know, the court size is a third of it. So if someone makes a mistake in the back, it's really close to the goal. You know, yeah. like in soccer, oh, you yeah. have some time to like, you know, get everyone behind the ball. In futsal, it's not that way. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I think like last season was kind of a roller coaster, like usually how it goes. Um, but I think that every year we, we bring more, a little bit more maturity to the game have a little bit more consistency and that's what we saw last year was um, you, that towards the end of the season was just more consistency throughout the whole game oh yeah it you was. know and so that was cool to see I think the last game um, we beat Chicago Cadence, Cadence. quite Cadence. a bit 20, 20 to 6 or something yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of a weird game everything everything we did just kind of worked and you know um, yeah it was fun so yeah it's I, I can attest to the one goal changing uh, yeah, it changes everything. The Trislip game last year, the last, what, five minutes, it was one goal, back and forth, yep. and back and forth, and it was just your heart gets you know, ripped out of your chest, and then yeah. it feels like a shot of adrenaline. And yeah, then... that's what makes it so fun to watch. Oh, yeah. It's... That's, that's why it's like, like it's hard to explain to people in words, like how oh, do you yeah. explain futsal, but it, once you get there, you're like, whoa, this is really cool. There's a purity oh, to the sport. Um, you understand when things are good. You understand when somebody does something, you're like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and there's adrenaline all the time. It's, I mean, it's a really, really cool sport. It's, I mean, it's, it's weird because when you think of, you know, soccer, these, you don't think of squeaking, squeaky shoes like a basketball mm -hmm. nope. court, <laughs> and it's, and the yelling and stuff. Because you just hear the crowds and everything, but to hear it up in your face, it's yeah, it's cool. Oh, all the smack talk on the on the touchline over here. Yeah. For those those Ann Arbor tries that like, <laughs> that was that was some fun stuff. Yeah, that was it's part of the stuff. sport, man. It's so it's so fun, and it's cool to see you know, that we have this here in Lansing at the scale that we do. And I know that Jake and I have been, you know, working at this for a long time to make this happen, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes that have done stuff as well. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's, it's really cool to just see, wow, like Lansing has this, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that more and more people will realize that, that, um, that this isn't just about people at Lansing City or that have been involved in the club, but this is also reflective of the the city of Lansing, and to say um, we have this really unique, really cool thing here, and it's it is about the city, you know. Yeah, it's. I mean, I feel Lansing is a city that knows what it can be. It's just kind of like two thirds of the way yeah, we're, finding. We're itself. trying to find an identity for sure. And you know, Detroit's got Detroit's got the automotive industry and it's got, you know, Detroit versus everybody. Grand Rapids yeah. has, you know, Beer City, Blue Bridge, all that good stuff. And Lansing's just kind of smack in the middle. Yeah. And we're just like, mm, we're the capital city, but <laughs> I mean, there's only so so much yeah. so far you can take that for okay, you're the capital. What else you got? Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think now with all these, you know, independent businesses coming, oh, we got breweries, we got pizza, we got yeah. 8,000 barbecue places, one right next door, smoking pig, try it out, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Do it before a game, oh man, it was, even pickup, I picked it, oh man. Yeah, I didn't realize stuff. I didn't realize how good it was. I always saw on Saginaw, they always had that, yep, you know, the, the trailer there. there. Yeah. I was like, wow, they must, you know, because you see the sun that walk, go by and you're just kind of like, mm, I'm good, but they, man so nice the food's so good yeah and the fact that you guys actually partner with them during the season yeah i think is huge because local helping local it's mm -hmm. i think that's one thing lansing has done well is local supporting local yeah no i mean you're right like lansing's trying to find their identity and, and but the reality is there's a lot of great people in lansing there's a lot of very cool stuff going on in lansing and i think that you know over the next five years or so um people are really going to see 
I don't want to call it a rebirth, but I think that there's so much mm -hmm. momentum going in a positive direction. It's like really, an, really cool to see. Kind of like an epiphany. Kind of yeah. like, this is what we can be. Well, I think people are, you know, when you're working on something, working on anything, you know, to, to people that don't know what's going on, it seems like, oh, wow, like all of a sudden it's there and it's like an overnight success. But it's not an overnight success. It, they've been working on it for a really long time. Oh, yeah. It just oh, takes yeah. time to get to where they want it to be. And I think there's a lot of things in Lansing like that. Oh, absolutely. You know, that people have been working behind the scenes to make it something really special and to kind of help give Lansing an identity. And it's just now coming to the surface and people are, be, you know, they're beginning to see the fruits of their labor. Yeah, and it's, uh, I've noticed a lot that with citizens in the city, it kind of seems like it's a city punching above its weight, so to speak. Sure, yeah. Like, it's not trying to compete with the big guys, but at the same time, it's like, hey, we're here and we know what we're capable mm -hmm. of, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Coach Jervy, on a coaching note, uh, Akron, Columbus, they were, you know, top of the table last year, but they brought in, you know, futsal ringers. Uh, what's your what's your take on clubs? You know, bringing in people, you know, club club players from Argentina, different countries to compete for you know, compete in this league. Um, I think it's great. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> that's, yeah, we're we're entertainers yeah. and we're trying to put a you know a good substance on the floor for everyone. Um, I think you might start seeing that more and more. You know, as everything grows and financial stability grows with the clubs and you know resources grow because um, right now currently right like we say futsal is super young and, and new um, so at this moment a lot of the top players are from other countries and you know that's it's not a knock on what we have it's just we're so young a lot of our soon-to-be stars are still in the youth academies oh growing, yeah you know so um, I think it's great it brings the level up the, the fans get to see what the highest level of futsal is like and we're a professional club so we're, we're all trying to do what we can to win that's that's the end goal right oh absolutely yeah, um, yeah can i say something on oh, that? Yeah. i think Go like for it. i mean i think like you know if you're competing in sports you want to play against the best oh absolutely and so there somebody said a story about michael jordan i don't know if this is true or not but they said it sounded good so um <laughs> they he said they said that the reason why michael jordan would trash talk people so much is that he wanted them to be at the top, po the top possible of their game, right? They, he wanted them to be so upset and motivated <laughs> to beat oh, yeah. him because he wanted to play against the best. And I think that that is so key when you approach sports to, to never have an attitude that you want it easy, that you want to you want to play teams that are maybe not so good, so you can have easy success. No, you want to play against the best. Oh yeah. And so these, you know, teams getting better and bringing players in this is great this is what we want we want to play against the best we want that competition you know yep. and uh with with these ringers coming in argentina all these other countries do you feel that you know younger americans who are getting into futsal you know in that age the the pro senior mm -hmm. team range do you think that that might discourage them from you know trying to progress they don't feel the upward mobility is there is that is there kind of a fear of that being bounced out of a roster for somebody who they flew you know mm. two thousand miles to play for the season i don't know i i think it i think at the end of the day it might actually encourage kids um, they see a different style a different type of player and you know personally i coach high school soccer in the local area and i've been seeing like a local trend of you know, kids that I know are linked to futsal, and there's a different style and a different type of soccer being played. Um, so I think at the end of the day, it actually might influence kids to play in a different manner from which we've known as, you know, soccer or you know, futsal. And um, so I think it's I think it's actually could potentially be good. Yeah, that's that's the great thing about sports, is that every game you get to start on the same level as everybody else. Every game is, is every training you reset, everyone starts at zero, zero, and you get approved. What can you do? Yeah. And nothing's based on what you did yesterday or what you did last year or where you're from or what your upbringing was. It doesn't matter. It's a great thing about sports is every single game, every single training, you get an equal opportunity to prove and show what you got. And so um, 
you know, we, I tell this to our young players, I know Jake does too, to, to tell them that, to say, listen, the responsibility and performance is on you. Oh, absolutely. And you get an equal opportunity every single time you step on the floor, it, you get a new shot. And that's the great thing about sports. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to see what, what has grown yeah. with this going, you know, from the Doty to, that Doty you know, Center. your, your new digs here and you've, You've made some. Uh, you've made some improvements inside here yep. since. Uh, Jake was since scoring last goals season. at the Doty Center. You know that <laughs> back in the day. Jake oh. started out as our goalkeeper, oh, scoring yeah, the, goals with the finger tape and the wrist tape. That's right, and, uh, man. <laughs> well, the keeping court, all the joints where they need to be. Yeah, <laughs> the core was so much smaller. It was only like 90 feet or something, and uh, so this core here is like 125, and so you know you're talking substantial difference. Yeah. So yeah, Jake would kind of wander up to the halfway line and just try to smoke bombs and uh <laughs> and eventually sometimes they'd go in yeah. <laughs> see I, I like yeah. this guy because that's how i would play indoor soccer down at lisa yeah i'd be defender i would just sit there and i would lurk yeah. no one would you know no one would pay attention to me because my first run i completely just turf you know turf monster just straight bit it so yeah. it was it was like out of a it was out of a comedy i was running <laughs> and then next thing you know it was just you know, roof, wall, grass. And yeah, it was, that was it's, it. it's more fun for me to just lurk because, you know, I like being unnoticed. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's fantastic. I think, uh, I think having those memories though, having that kind of history to tell people, mm -hmm. this is where, you know, we were, yeah. and this is where we are now with a gigantic Lansing city on the wall and a gigantic video board. Yeah. I mean, come on, you gotta, you gotta wake up every morning feeling proud of, you know, what you get to walk into every day. I'm, I'm proud that we're able to have the opportunity to do what we're doing. And I'm, I'm thankful for the people that have backed us up. And I think that it's, you know, especially in these times, uncertain times during, you know, the pandemic and everything, you know, there's, there's a greater sense of understanding of a gratefulness for the people that are um, on your team, so to speak. You know, and that's that's where that sense of pride comes from. Yeah, it's you know black, white, and blue. You know, it's yep. five one seven. It's you know that's the identity. Of this yeah. place. Yeah, we'll make it our own, and you know, yeah. it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty. No, I mean, it, it look. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited about it. I love coming in here. It, it's um, it's really really cool. So it's a standard yeah. bear, really. Yeah. I think the more people see what you're putting together here, the more people can realize that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, we want people, we want futsal to grow. But, you know, Jay can attest to this. I don't think we ever sat down and said, okay, you know, we're going to do, we're going to, you know, do this kind of miniature arena thing and, and have this grand plan. It was really just, you know, every day we're trying to think, okay, what's, what is the best way to showcase this sport? What is the best way to give players a better environment to play in, to train in? What's the best way to um, have this sport be able to show to people, to fans, to have them enjoy the game, et cetera? And so, you know, it's, it's interesting to see over the last four, four and a half years, it all come together and then look back and say, wow, you know, a lot's happened, you know, like there's a big difference. And it doesn't seem like that in the journey, you right. know. Yeah. But when you look back, you go, yeah, we were walking into the Doty Center and Jake was hitting bombs from half court. Like it's a now, it's, 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 uh, now it's really yelling cool. at Danny to do the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's cool to look back. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we, we love this place. And it's, it's crazy. So many people from different, countries different cultures and stuff they have they have a piece of landing city and they take that take that with them um what what does it mean for you guys to you know be able to know that these people are taking their experiences and their appreciation for this club to places that you know you would never think that it would reach i mean for me the club is really about people i i guess i guess the cl I, I love playing, right? I love playing, I love competing, I love the sport of futsal. But I guess from a, um, a standpoint of more of like a club, what do we stand for? And what do people take home with them? I think that if people can see us as, as people that are willing to um, make short-term sacrifices to 
have something in the long term that is for the greater good is worth it. That would be number one because nobody in the club would tell you that they haven't made sacrifices the past four years. Oh, absolutely. Jake has made countless sacrifices. A lot of people behind the scenes, the players have made countless. So if people will walk away with the understanding that it is worth it to make short-term sacrifices for the greater good for a better future, I think that's one thing that I think people get the sense of when they're here. Um, and then also having an understanding of um, that passion and vision in life matters that you know life can't just be about um, solving problems all the time at some point you know it is nice to be able to look and say this is what I would like the future to be this is what I think would be a better future and then go out and do it and I think that um, you know everybody in the club kind of has that perspective and your point about um, you know, people from kind of around the world or people that come here kind of taking that taking that away with them, I think that they do get a sense of that. Um, but also at the end of the day, I think they just go, futsal's really cool and yeah. their, their place that they play is really cool, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. And uh, I have to ask, how is it running out from the locker room under that spotlight for the first time for a game? <laughs> did I, you ever run out from the spotlight or did you not? Back when we had a little disco ball at the door. No, no, yeah, but but when we were here, did you ever, as a coach, did you walk no, out? No, I was. That's all about the players. I'm not running out there. I think that would be cool if we did like a coach's entrance and you had to do like a couple of summer somersaults or something yeah, on the court. Man, I, I could kind of make it, it too. funny. Yeah. I I think so. The I know I'm talking a lot. Is that okay? Yeah. Is this fun? Okay. Oh, so yeah, so that's... the first <laughs> I have to tell like a story. So the first game that we had, or was the second game with Ann Arbor. So you see the first or the second game. I don't remember, but. No, no, the first game, we just got the final inspection. So it was the second game against yeah. Ann Arbor. So yeah, yeah. the second game against Ann Arbor, they, we were like, just had the facility like up and going, and there's so many details going on, and we didn't think through the best way to organize people coming into the building. Okay, yeah. it's just like low on the priority list. We're like, okay, people coming into the building, they just walk through the door, like yeah. it's not a big deal. So, um, but it was a big yep. deal because yep. there were so many people coming in. They were lined up in the freezing cold. Oh, it cold was crazy. Yeah. All the way it's down the building. Oh, it was amazing. And I remember looking out there and like being super excited that like, oh my gosh, look at all these people yep. lined up outside. And then being like, oh my gosh, we have to figure out a solution to this. <laughs> but, it's a good uh, problem to have. Yeah. Right? So, so, um. So running out, uh, so Jared, my brother, actually runs all the, what we call the show, um, with his business, The Pod. Um, he runs all the lights and sound system and everything, and, and um, it's, it's a complicated system, and he does a really good job of oh, it. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, I think when they were playing the starting music, and he had all the lights, like, linked up to, to, the, to the music track, and everyone was kind of like, holy cow, like, this is legit. Like, this is, this is in Lansing. This is so cool. Oh, it's, yeah. And I think some people that were, together. some people that never been to a game before, I think were a little bit like, oh my gosh, what's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this a thing? Are we playing laser tag? What's yeah, yeah, on? yeah. Like, they're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? I've been watching football. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, well, because like, when you see something on Facebook, you know, because a lot of people just find us like on Facebook and they see like a cool video and they go, okay, I want to go check that out. But usually when you see like a like a semi pro sports thing yeah. on Facebook or something like that, it's it's kind of a toss up. Like I'm not saying all of them are, are funky, but it's kind of a toss up like, okay, is this actually gonna be cool oh, or yeah. not? You know? And so you got some people walk in here and all of a sudden like the lights turn off and like all these lights come on and everything it looks like a concert, you know, yeah. like some kind of crazy like concert rave thing and it's like, Oh my <laughs> gosh, what is happening? you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So r running out and, and all that is like one of the coolest things ever. I mean, it's pretty cool. So I think I think one game having you know glow like blue glow sticks for the whole crowd. Yeah, yeah Ooh, that'd man, be sweet. You want to yeah. talk about? We have some stuff trippy. planned for this year. We have oh, some stuff man. planned for this year. So, yes. um, yeah, yes. I think 
Well, one of you the haven't things, failed to deliver, so I'm very excited. <laughs> I want Jake to be in a light-up LED suit oh and come God. swinging in from a ladder <laughs> <laughs> right as the music goes. I think that'd be sweet. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, Rich is like, this is a good idea. <laughs> as, long, as long as someone cues up Rocket Man. Yep. Dude, this is so cool. Oh, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous to see. Have him, like, that. come down, like, on the court, like, with the spotlight. Oh, dude, man. so cool. Oh, Let's dude, do it. Or, like, astronaut. Yeah. Like, astronaut with the flag. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> We discussed this. Oh. We discussed this, and Perfect. the problem is, you have to get him up there with a lift, and in order for no one to see it, he has to stay up <laughs> the ceiling <laughs> an hour before the game until oh, it drops. Yeah, oh, so you got, yeah so, so no pregame. No pre <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's gonna be up well, in the ceiling. Well, we get some electric car or something like a clown car for him to burn. Right yeah, there you go. That'd be sweet. We can do. That. Yeah, get a Power Wheels. You can yeah. get any yeah. kind of car. Power Wheels. Escalade pickup yep. truck, we'll make it happen. That'd we we got some stuff planned, we do, oh. and I'm I'm pumped about it. So, and I see a sign on the wall that says "Fan Shop." I am very excited. Yes. Shut up and take up take my money meme. It's, That's right. It's it, it's going to be ridiculous. You guys are going to freak out when you see this stuff. So I uh, appreciate you guys coming, spending some time talking about the season. I'm super excited, as I'm sure you guys are, and all the city fans are. Yeah. Um, where can people find you guys? On the internet, any special, any special contests or anything going to be running for the preseason, or is it just going to stay there to yeah, stay updated for all yeah. the news? I mean, essentially, what we're going to do is um, we're going to open up uh, part of our training camp for people to be able to come and watch. Um, obviously, there's going to be um, some restrictions on, um, you know, because of the virus and things like that. But um, we're going to open that up, and uh, people will be able to. You know see the team for the first look you know be able to go in the fan shop a little bit see maybe the new kits potentially and uh, uh you uh, guys heard it yeah and, and, <laughs> and just to kind of get you know involved in futsal again it should be pretty cool i mean i'm really excited about going to training camp and doing on running and all this stuff and uh it just seems so far away it's still yeah, like it's, a month and yeah. it's like geez can this be next weekend oh, you know, it's but, it's it's I'm so ready for it yeah. and I'm looking forward to you know tryouts and training camp where you blast you know an absolute missile on some poor unsuspecting kids <laughs> and it's, yeah. their eyes are gonna look like dinner plates yeah has has that rocket has that like has that reputation spread or is it still kind of one of those things you just you keep in your pocket and Jacob just sits in the corner and just gives up <laughs> like these kids ain't ready for it I I don't know <laughs> I don't often think like what's I don't know I. To, to me, it doesn't seem all that quick or that fast. And then, I don't know, I guess it's decently fast. And I don't know. What is your thought on that? Decently? That is, <laughs> that is, that is the most I underselling thing yeah, I've ever I just heard. Don't, on I this don't spot. think that way. I don't think that way. I think how, how do we win games and score yeah. more goals? Yeah. That's exactly, I mean, when you were setting this up, Jake and I were in, in the other room. What are we talking about? Like, very detailed things about yeah. like what we're going to do so that we will win games and score goals. Yeah. This is like how my mind works. Yeah. I never think about what I don't know how I shoot or what the perception is yeah. of me playing. So yeah. yeah, just unfortunate if you're the guy in front of it. I guess. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. I some some guys took some balls last year to the face and to the chest from you, and yeah. I just. I thought they need a stretcher. <laughs> they, you know how you like hop right back up and you're like, oh, I'm fine, I'm yeah. fine, and then like two minutes later, you're like, I am not. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. it's, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure if there's been a couple guys who've had to swallow their pride a sure. little bit. Well, he he gave me a concussion one time in practice. Oh yeah, yeah is that last that year? Story? Yeah, we were doing set piece training. I just kind of oh, yeah, that's right. we were working on some dead ball like free yeah. kick stuff, and I jump in just to like give us another body because I yeah. wanted you know and. I turned my head and it hit me in the back of my head and then everything's spinning and the lights are really bright. And yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. I remember that. Yep. yep. Were you on on my team in that set piece or were you in the wall? I was on the wall because yeah, I just I didn't want so. my players to get hit so I took it and then I was yeah. concussed. So. You shouldn't have turned your head. Yeah. I mean, this, is, this, this is the kind of coach you need for a team willing to put his body yep. on the line yep. yes. for the sake of improvement. And you yep. will only find that here. At <laughs> 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 well, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for taking some time out and uh, I'm super excited for what you guys have in store. The arena yeah. looks amazing. The plans sound rock solid and it's. I'm ready to go. Absolutely. I'm ready to go. So, uh, guys, check out the Citizen Supporters on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for all your news and updates, and we will see you next time.
Boom. Sweet. Cool. Awesome, cool. awesome. Man, oh man.